Uh, We've been done once, don't get done twice. It was brilliant, though. Did Edison Manchester. have to dive in, meanwhile, for the penalty, Robbo? Or is it just how things happen no. too quickly? No, he didn't have to dive in because he was never going to get there. So it's a poor pass by Ake, of course it is. But once he realises that Nunes is going to get there first, he's just going to hold him up because the touch from Nunes is always going to go towards the touchline. He's still got to try and get in from a really impossible angle. He should have stayed on his feet, held up Nunes. So there's two mistakes. The first one was by Ake. The second one, probably even just as bad, was by Edison. It was reckless. It was silly. Uh, and he didn't read the situation well enough. You know, he's a good enough goalkeeper and a good enough understander of football to realise he was never going to get to that ball first. So he's just going to hold his ground and make it difficult for Nunez to go past him. But by, by lashing out on it, it was always going to be a penalty as soon as that ball was played back. Well, he didn't even, he, even with that, he didn't, he, he could have, as Stuart said, he could have ushered them to the corner, but he, 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 he took an almighty lash at it. Uh, Which makes no sense. As a goalkeeper, right, sometimes they, they, they don't realise. I think how quick some of these players are. Right. Yeah. But the one thing that I think he could have done, he could have made a tackle instead. He could he could easily have made a slide tackle, and he would have had much more chance of getting there than taking a big swing at the ball. But give Nunes credit, he was he knew he saw Aki passing it back before Aki had started the pass back, and he was on to it. I, I think we've got to realise goalkeepers don't understand how slow they are either. Oh. <laughs> as, well as, as well as not understanding how fast they are the goalies think they're quicker than they are uh, so we've talked a lot about Liverpool what about Manchester City where did it go wrong why didn't we see them anywhere near their best today Pep Guardiola of course brought off Kevin De Bruyne in the second half the Belgium international clearly not happy Pep addressed it after the match Kevin didn't look too, too happy to come off um, how big a decision was it to, to bring him off no he's happy no problem at all. I like it if he's upset it's good so, like a decision because I know where we miss it and we miss keep the ball and we could not miss him uh, with him and Bernie and John and the other one. We could not, we could not have it. And and after we <coughs> we 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 did it better. So, but listen, <laughs> Kevin is. What can I say for Kevin? We need it and we need him and it's really, really important. It's not for him. So he is in a difficult place to come to play and he tried in the first half, he was incredibly involved in all the transitions, the shoots and the, the corner, the deliver and many things. We know it, but the moment, the, the moment I had the second half after goal concede, or we give them in that moment, so the game was not in our hands and I wanted to make something like we can keep the game back to us a little bit and this is the idea no more than that sooner or later in this stadium have 50 20 minutes have to try as less as possible that looks like a tsunami like oh my god come for everywhere you have the ball and and everything but after when Matteo especially Matteo came in we can make an extra passes that this is the target to play that the first half not because we didn't want it it's because they are really really strong in that Pressing and contra-pressing and aggressivity in the stadium is not easy, but never, never we we <laughs> give away the try to play. But with Matteo, with John, with Rodri, and feel inside, have the quality to keep the ball like we didn't could keep it before, and um, and we have our chances. They have our chances, and at the end, of the game is is what happened. Robo, does what you say make sense about the Kovacic De Bruyne sub? Yes, to a certain degree, because, and he's absolutely right, in the first 20 minutes, in the first half also, Kevin De Bruyne was, and Man City were dominating midfield, Kevin De Bruyne can play in that role just in behind Haaland, and he can get on the ball, and he gives Endo a problem. Does Endo press, or does he drop off? But in the second half, when Liverpool were pressing much higher up the field, Manchester City couldn't get the ball to Kevin De Bruyne, because they were being outnumbered and outplayed in midfield. So he becomes a luxury player, and that's why they took him off, and they put uh, Kovacic in there. And I, I fully understand why he did that. Uh, it, it made them less effective. But again, I go back to when that happens, and it happened at Arsenal when Man City played there. When they went longer, to get Kevin De Bruyne in the game, it had to go into Haaland and Haaland to Kevin De Bruyne, not the other way around. And again, Haaland, for me, didn't show up enough, didn't win enough balls that were played up to him, and didn't show enough. And if you're playing, usually it doesn't matter. But when the opposition are trying to dominate midfield and pressing you high up, you've got to bypass that and go into your centre forward. And he didn't do enough, which didn't allow Kevin De Bruyne to show his skills as well. It was a domino effect for Man City in a bad way. What happened was, John Stones very early on, when City were got off to a flyer, 
And De Bruyne did get in a lot of these positions in the first half, but three or four times he, uh, Rodri played a little ball around the corner to him and he's hit a bad ball. He's tried to put Haaland away and he's hit a bad ball. His passing wasn't as good today. Yeah, he had a couple of shots in the corner. But what happened was... It, John Stones, who was trying to do what he's been doing whenever he's been fit, stepping in, very comfortable, him and Rodri, leaving a Kanji in a back three. When Liverpool got a foothold in the game and started to really uh, put that pressure on, that wave after wave of, of red, Stones had to go back and sit in the back four. And that meant De Bruyne had to come back and play, and everybody had to come back. So right. all of a sudden, he's not in that position, and all of a sudden, en he, Endo doesn't have to worry about him as much because the whole City side have been pushed back. I mean, how often do you hear... How often do we talk about City being pushed back? Mm. But after 10 or 15 minutes, that's what Liverpool did. And so Stones effectively could only step out when they had the ball, which was less and less as the game went on. And that meant that De Bruyne became less effective. That meant the fullbacks couldn't push up. And that meant there was a bigger gap to Erling Haaland. And that, as that gap grew to Haaland, the balls into him weren't good. His touch wasn't very good or somebody was picking up. So it was Liverpool's pressure that really pushed City back into a traditional back four and it meant De Bruyne's, you know, uh, influence in the game was limited. And he, he could have been stubborn, you know. Pep could have been stubborn. He could have said, look, we'll ride this out. We've got good players. We're experienced players. We'll ride it out and we'll start passing the ball. But he figured out that, you know what, that's not happening. Right. It's just, we're just, today, the way the game's going, we are not able, we're not going to be able to do that. I'm going, to have to, I'm going to have to sacrifice somebody and it's going to have to be Kevin De Bruyne because I need somebody else in there who is going to defend and who has a better understanding of keeping a position. Because De Bruyne doesn't. You know, he, one, of the, one of the reasons that he gets himself space is because he's able to drift around in different spots and get in between the back four and the middle.